I wanted to start by thanking Safia for uh, allowing me to come today again with another informative video on health and beauty this time. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about hair. Um, mostly hair and skin. Both skin and hair are very interrelated to each other. So, and most of the time, uh, hair loss is usually not necessarily a problem. It is like an independent problem. It's usually a symptom of another problem. Our body treats hair, skin, and nails like accessories. Although skin is one of the largest organ of our body, um, but when it comes to um, feeding it and nourishing it, it kind of comes secondary. That's where it's very important to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves. Um, most of the time, like I said, uh, hair loss and skin issues are a result of some other problem. So the root of the problem is more important than what's actually happening. If you see hair loss, it's usually a result of you having some other issue that needs to get resolved before your hair loss will start getting back. So that's something I wanted you to just know off the bat from the beginning. And I'll get into some of the root reasons why hair loss might happen and how and what you can do to fix that. So although skin is uh, a big part of our body, I'm going to talk a little bit about it, but more I'm going to talk about hair because it's one of the most frequent issues that uh, people are facing. And everything that I'm going to discuss related to good hair health will be relevant to good skin health and anything that's relevant to good hair health will also be relevant to good nails. So because our hair and nails are made out of the same protein called keratin. So if you're going to do anything that helps your hair it will help naturally your nails as well and your skin so there are um, different types of hair loss there are more than four types uh, which are very common in women but there are two very very common ones that I'm going to talk about today um, because those are the most relevant and most more probably 80 to 90 percent of people who face who have hair loss have one of these two conditions. And the other ones, they have a completely different diagnosis and different treatment, and I don't want to get into that. It's also, although um, if you have one of those issues, it's very apparent and easily uh, found out through uh, going through to a doctor and you know getting a regular checkup, it's very easy to find the other ones. These two are kind of hard to diagnose and hard to find, so I'm going to talk about them. And like I said, they're the most common ones. So the main type, the most most common type of hair loss is uh, called telogen effluvium. Um, that is when you suddenly see lots of hair falling. So you all of a sudden notice for a few weeks or a few months you've you've had a significant amount of hair falling, especially when you're combing your hair or you're going to the bathroom. You're seeing lots and lots of hair than normal. Um, that's the most common type. And then there is another type which um, you don't necessarily see lots of hair falling, but you notice the thinning of your hair or the thinning of uh, the, your, the part on your hair, on your scalp, and you can start visibly seeing a little bit of your scalp, which was never there. Or also uh, you notice that your ponytail is thinner than before. So this is a gradual hair loss. A lot of the times you don't even realize that you're losing hair over a long period of time until someone points at you and says, oh, you know what, we can see your scalp or maybe, you know, you have a wider part um, on, on, your scalp, on your head. So that is usually when people notice this. Um, it is a, also a very uh, common, common type of hair loss. It is also called androgenetic alopecia. Um, the other name for it is female pattern hair loss. So these two are, they're different. Sometimes they can come together depending on what's happening in the body. But um, they're two, both of them are, have different reasons for happening and both of them have different uh, um, symptoms and different ways that you can maybe manage and treat them. Although I'm going to pick the most common ways to treat them and we'll get go from there. So understanding how to treat hair fall 
you first need to kind of understand how your hair grows what uh, is hap what what how it naturally grows so this is basically uh, the cycle of your hair growth um, so on an average person we have about hundred thousand hairs uh, on the head on the scalp and that's quite average and uh, most of it about 80 to 90 percent of the hair on your head at this moment while you're speaking is at a growth stage or anagen phase that basically means that it's growing it is healthy it has a good blood supply and uh, typically in an average and healthy individual uh, your hair grows about a centimeter every month or maybe an inch every two months um, and this growth phase usually lasts between two to eight years depending on what's happening in your life and stuff like that but an average eight years and then they usually go to the next phase which is the catagen phase and about one or two percent of your hair is usually in this stage it's a transition phase when your hair is done growing it doesn't need any more help, uh, growth so it starts um, be becoming looser from its roots and the third phase is called the telogen phase which is the resting phase this is when your hair is done growing uh, it's about to shed so it's resting and about uh, 10 to 20 percent of your hair is usually in this uh, phase so if you are looking at your head right now and you have say hundred thousand hairs about like I said 90 percent is at growth phase and then 10 to 20 uh, 10 percent is at a resting phase and that's where naturally you see a random hair fall on an, an average day about 50 to 100 hair fall on an average day is normal because that's pretty much how many hairs are at resting phase and the resting phase usually lasts about three months so your hair is resting for three months and then it'll go and be shed off and another hair will come and replace it so usually in the resting phase the new hair starts growing and it starts pushing out the old hair which was in the telogen phase so resting phase so it takes about three months for your hair to stay at rest and then it starts falling off and uh, so you are it's natural to see between 50 to 100 sometimes up to 200 but I guess no more no more than 200 hair a day is an average hair fall. Any more than that, then it is probably that you are losing some, um, you're having that significant hair loss, which is one of the um, ones that I talked about earlier. So the sudden hair fall. So in this um, phase, uh, just by the name telogen effluvium, it means that your hair is, staying at the rest phase for a longer time than um, than in the growth phase. So that basically means that something happened where instead of your hair growing, um, it is being transitioned to the rest phase and eventually they start uh, falling off. So typically you notice a lot of hair falling, especially when you're washing or combing, like I said, uh, generalized, generalized thinning of hair but not so much that you see your scalp so you don't necessarily notice that you're losing hair or you have less volume in your hair um, this is usually the second condition most of the time it's just a overall uh, hair fall so you don't necessarily see patches or anything like that so you should, that sh is not one of the symptoms uh, but other symptoms is you know your hair is drier and it doesn't have that shine anymore um, and then you also when the hair is hair falls you should see a little bit of a white bulb at the end that's the root of your hair and that's a good sign it's actually a sign that your hair is being getting removed from its root uh, so that a new hair can take its place if if there's no white bulb on the hair then that's kind of a sign that your hair is damaged or something else is happening it's probably not this kind of hair fall Either your hair is damaged or using a lot of products or a lot of heating or a lot of other stuff that is tugging and, dis and destroying your hair and damaging it. So you shouldn't, um, so it's actually a good thing if you see a little bit of the root um, that comes off with the hair. Also some people notice that the hair is a bit lighter in color um, than usual. So that's also another thing. But the good news is that a lot of this 
type of hair fall is temporary. It's usually triggered three months after some kind of stress happens in your life. And say, you know, maybe there's a death in your family or you're traveling or maybe you um, you move, you're, you know, you're having a big move or even if you had surgery or anesthesia uh, is usually one of the reasons for hair fall, having a fever or infection. Even emotional stress uh, can lead to hair fall, but usually this is three months after uh, after uh, you have that stress. So let's say you uh, you know you had a big move, uh, say in January. So you probably will start seeing hair fall from March, April. Uh, you'll notice a lot more hair fall. For example, that would be something because, like I said. Um, when your hair is resting it's resting for about three months before it starts shedding and a new hair replace itself so what usually happens in this type of hair fall is when you're stressed out for longer periods of time or even short periods of time your body allocates all all its resources its oxygen and um it's in fight infecting infection fighting powers and your anti um sorry in your immune system and everything is targeted towards um, towards fighting that stress or that infection or that problem, uh, and the resources, the blood supply uh, is shifted. It's not given as much importance to the hair and the skin uh, as much as it would give to someone else. So let's say there's a fire in your house, and uh, God forbid, and your body is not going to say okay let me take a few more minutes and digest the food that i've eaten uh, this morning let me take out all the proteins and the vitamins and put them in the right places um or your body's not going to say okay let me uh, quickly digest the food so i can go to the bathroom before i leave the house because there's a fire in the house that's not what your body's going to do and also it's not going to say okay you know what Let's take a little bit of oxygen that I have and a little bit of the sugar that I ate uh, this morning. I'll break it down and give it to my hair so my hair looks beautiful when I go out and people will see me. That's definitely not what your body is doing. Your body is going to take all the oxygen, everything it can. It'll give it, um, it'll break down all the sugar it has stored uh, to give you that quick boost of energy so that you can run out of the house, right? So all your... Um, bodies, um, oxygen and everything is taken to the place where it's supposed to be so that you can survive. So your hair and nails are going to com be compromised on that because uh, instead of the growth phase, your blood supply is going to stop. So uh, your hair will quickly go into the rest phase and the rest phase lasts for about three months. So that's when you will start seeing shedding of hair three months after something significant happen in your life. Um, also, post-pregnancy is a time when you see lots of hair um, fall because during pregnancy, your hair is at growth phase. Everything is at the growth phase in a sense when you're pregnant. So, you know, you're getting a really good healthy supply of oxygen to your hair and your hair is looking, usually looks really luscious and beautiful and you have very little shedding of your hair because your hair stays longer in the growth phase when you're pregnant. So right after you deliver, uh, you don't need all of that stuff. So a lot of the hair transitions to the rest phase because a lot, instead of like, you know, in the beginning uh, or in the previous video, I said about 80 to 90% is that growth phase. In pregnancy, it's longer. Uh, and for the longest duration, a lot of your hair stays in the um, active growth phase. So when you are um, done with pregnancy and you have your baby, then you typically uh, lose a lot of that extra hair that was there. Um, and some a lot of people, because you don't notice so much hair fall during pregnancy, after pregnancy when you see it, you feel like you're losing a lot of hair. Sometimes it's not too much extra hair than usual. Uh, maybe sometimes it is, but it's just unusual. Uh, it's usually a natural way. Um, you lose hair, but then that usually stops. Um, it's not permanent. And then the other types of hair fall uh, or other reasons why you have that hair fall is emotional and physical stress. So your body doesn't really know how to deal with emotions. Um, it takes emotions similar to how it takes physical stress. Say you get uh, hit 
or you you know you uh, you are sick your body um, you know puts all these antibodies out and you know all the immune system gets ready to fight that infection or say you get a cut to fight that cut and close the bruise same thing when you have emotional stress all your resources and everything's out there but the only issue is it doesn't know what to heal it knows you're in stress it knows there's a problem but it doesn't know what to heal so you're usually if you don't manage your emotional stress uh, so too well then your body is on, usually in a constant state of stress and that's usually a big reason why you have hair fall because your body is putting all its resources uh, you have high um, heat and inflammation in your body which is not good uh, when it's there for too long so emotional stress and physical stress physical stress that lasts long for example would be someone who has let's say um, heart issues or diabetes or uh, high blood pressure these this is also kind of a stress for your body so it's also treating your body in the same way allocating all its resources away from your hair and your skin other reason is thyroid problems or not controlled thyroid once the thyroid is controlled you can actually start seeing hair fall coming uh, hair coming back it's usually reversible if you can control uh, your thyroid uh, issues um, as long as the hormones are balanced uh, also some medications even advil and tylenol um, and any kind of medication really ha triggers hair loss so if you don't need certain medications it's better when you get off of the medications usually your hair starts getting back which is good also some immune diseases and mostly nutritional deficiencies now usually nutritional deficiencies are uh, two types um, and I'll get to that but basically like I said this type of hair fall is reversible usually you will start seeing hair coming back about three to six months uh, from the time you start losing the hair because then you know hopefully there's another set of hair replacing itself and you will start noticing a little bit of tiny hair especially on the side that are coming back usually within three to six months this usually uh, resolves itself especially if the stress is gone or the the reason why you have the hair fall is gone so let's say three months after pregnancy uh, maybe three more months uh, let's say when your baby is about six months old or nine months old you should start seeing uh, your hair fall stuff and everything getting back to normal again but for some people this probably doesn't happen you know for some people it lasts longer than six months if that's happening that's probably because there's some other stressor that came back so within the healing time there was another reason that you got stressed or another issue that happened which started another cycle of hair loss that's possible also having some kind of uh, so chronic stress or chronic inflammation if there's, if there's always constant inflammation in your body then that's probably why it's going to take longer than six months um, also poor diet and um, or having um, issues with the gut something like um, you know a celiac disease or Crohn's disease or IBS irritable bowel syndrome if you have any of these it's probably more that you are um, you're not absorbing the vitamins and the minerals which are which help hair grow so even if you take supplements it's not going to help because if your body is not absorbing these uh, nutrients no matter how many supplements you give your body it's not going to help uh, also poor diet or crash dieting is a very very big uh, reason why people lose hair a lot of people women especially i think when you go on a diet you cut out large chunks of foods you know especially uh, carbohydrates and you usually end up eating very little calories and when you are eating Gives me very little calories your uh, body is on starvation survival mode it's not going to take it's not gonna think about getting your hair and skin looking beautiful because right at this point it's just thinking I have to survive I'm going to die because this person is not feeding me so your body is on a constant stress level when you're dieting so it's not a good idea to diet there are other ways to have weight loss uh, which doesn't include restricting too many calories so restricting calories is a big culprit uh, for hair fall 
So uh, the second type, I'm going to go through this a little quicker, um, and then I'll get to the interesting and fun part, the food stuff. But basically, the other type um, is when you have a lot of hair, thinning of hair. Basically, you notice that your ponytail isn't as big as it used to be before, or your hair looks, um, in your, or you know, your part is a little bigger than usual. Uh, usually, a lot of people notice this when someone tells them that I, we can see a little bit of the scalp. Are you losing hair? And that's when you notice, oh, maybe I have been losing hair. You know, it. It, there's no sudden hair fall, so even if you catch the, the, your hair and try to um, uh, see, um, so I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned this or not because I uh, got disconnected, but I'll just tell you there are ways to measure how much hair you're losing. So one day a week when you are, um, the days when you're not shampooing your hair, so if you shampoo your hair every day, you can just pick any day of the week, but if you don't shampoo on a regular basis, then on the second on the day after you shampoo your hair uh, what I uh, prefer you do is the whole day collect all the hair that falls uh, and put it in a bag in a plastic bag and just label it with the date uh, with it and then do that again after two weeks and collect all the hair you can on a day when you day after you uh, shampooed your hair because usually when you shampoo your hair you usually lose a lot of hair so that's not a good indication but on a day when you don't shampoo your hair it's a good idea to measure all the hair that's falling put it in a bag uh, do it every two weeks for a few months so that you know you get a good idea of how much hair you're losing on average uh, sometimes it can uh, you'll notice that you're losing a lot more than usual but in this type of hair usually it's the usual type of hair fall it's not like a sudden extra hair fall um, it's a gradual loss of hair it's also called androgenetic alopecia, or the other name for it is female parent hair loss. One of the biggest uh, reasons for this is um, hormonal issues and also genetics. So most people, if there's someone in your family who has, you know, who has this type of hair fall where you lose hair on the scalp, uh, then it's possible that you will have it too. Um, it is multi-genetic, so there's many different genes that uh, are contributing. It's not just a single gene. So you could be inheriting this from, uh, from you know, your relatives. So if you say see your mother or your sister and they don't have any hair fall and maybe your grandmother doesn't have that type of hair fall, if your aunt, like your pupu or your khala or somebody has it, it's probably going to come to you. So it doesn't have to be an immediate relative, even a distant relative, if they have that, you might have it. Uh, and the unfortunate thing is that um, it ha it's happening more earlier in the next generation. So let's say if you're Nani and Dadi or Pupu, you know, they've had their, uh, you, you, they start losing or having that uh, bald spot or that uh, hair loss, you know, in the age of 40 or 50, you might see it earlier in 30s and 20s and actually nowadays it's very common that this type of hair loss is seen in women with between the ages 20 and 30 so it does come earlier in each generation so every generation the hair fall uh, looks uh, comes earlier and earlier which is very unfortunate uh, so this is sort of what it looks like the first one is the typical and generally healthy normal hair the second is when you start noticing that you some people don't even notice at this point, but you start seeing that your part is a lot wider than before. Um, your hair is a little, lot thinner on your head. And then and then there's a third and fourth and fifth. It's always good to treat it as early as possible or you know work on it at the earliest stage because it's kind of hard to reverse it once it gets to a certain point. Um, so what's usually happening? The biggest culprit is hormonal issues. Yes, um, Asma, thank you. Um, so that's exactly what I'm talking about. So you're, you start seeing this more often. It's usually related to hormones. So um, hormone, especially testosterone, women have testosterone in them, but uh, if you have a lot more testosterone than is normal, this is typically what happens. Uh, unfortunately, what happens is that there is a thinning or shrinkage of the hair follicle. So if you look at this here, this is a general hair um, follicle. So what happens is, um, so first of all, the hair 
is in the growth phase for a shorter time and then when it comes to um, when it's shed and a new hair comes in its place it's usually shorter um, the hair follicle is smaller and it's further away if you see here it's further away from the blood supply than it was before and the hair comes thinner it's more finer than it was before so there's actually a decrease in the diameter of your hair as well if you, when you have this kind of um, hair fall and then every time you lose hair it comes back a lot thinner and it stays in the growth cycle a lot less you know generally a growth cycle or a growth phase lasts between two to eight years um, for people who have this condition depending on their hormone levels it can be fast it could be maybe six months or some a few months and you start shedding hair and the new hair that comes it's thinner it's finer and then um, every time it goes to a cycle it gets smaller and smaller and smaller eventually you might lose all of that but the good thing is that you don't not unlike men you don't lose your hairline so you still have that forehead um, a lot of men you know you, you when they lose hair they lose the hairline so they have a bigger forehead that usually doesn't happen so much with women it's mostly in the middle uh, where you start seeing the part and it just gets a little bigger and bigger so one of the risk factors for this uh, is severe stress whether it's emotional or physical and if you have hormone imbalance it's probably also um, it's a mix of both when you have hormone imbalance you have emotional stress and physical uh, inflammation in your body smoking um, also is a culprit so if you are smoking uh, if you stop smoking this should help a little bit and higher testosterone levels also are is one of the main ones um, this is typically uh, for girls and women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome not many people realize that polycystic ovarian syndrome has is linked very tightly with insulin and insulin resistance which means that even people who have diabetes or pre-diabetes have similar issues similar hair problems um, and people who have hypertension or high blood pressure also have that and um, I'm not I haven't done too much research on this but I found one of the one article that looked at longer sleep duration and shows that people who sleep longer maybe more than eight hours or something might have this uh, issue but really uh, one of the best ways to help um, treat this kind of hair fall is managing your hormones it's very important now I'm not I won't have time to talk in detail about this type um, although I'll talk about foods but um, it's very important to take care of their hormone balance through foods and managing blood sugar levels insulin levels those are important uh, so I can get to that but I'll talk about exercise and a little bit of foods so exercise is very 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 beneficial uh, for managing something like this I know physical activity and hair fall doesn't look like they should come together because they're so unrelated but they're not actually when you move more when you exercise more you have a higher blood supply you have a better uh, supply of blood to your extremities where your skin is where your hair is where your nails are because usually when you are sedentary blood doesn't flow as easily to further areas of your body so when you have more blood supply you have a better um, a better uh, oxygen and nutrients going to your the root of your hair which will start treating the hair fall so whatever diet I'll tell you or whatever foods I'll tell you it won't help if your blood is not taking the nutrients to that hair root right so it's very important that you get more physically active and get um, your blood uh, the resources to get to your blood also being physically active you have less stress your body fights infection and you have this feel-good hormone that's released after exercise during exercise probably you won't uh, care so much about it but after exercise you feel really good you have elevated mood and the mood helps with the hormone levels and it helps with managing the stress and the emotions emotional uh, stress and the physical uh, stress that's in your body uh, so an average of 150 minutes a week is recommended uh, when it comes to cardio activity so whether it's running walking uh, jogging cycling any of those 150 minutes a week so that's about 20 24 minutes um, a day 
uh, so I would say an average pick 30 minutes a day at least for younger kids it should be a little bit more or um, also track your steps uh, you can use Fitbit or a smartwatch is something that helps track the number of steps you can do it through a phone with your free apps of course but I usually recommend having something physical on you that way it's more accurate and it buzzes you and reminds you to walk and stuff like that so about 10,000 steps a day if you can get these two activities done it's a very good step to get to the next level which is starting eating a balanced nutrition so the treatment I'm telling you is for both types of hair loss the sudden hair fall which usually recovers by itself um, and I'm also talking about the female pattern hair fall it's very important that you don't eat any less than 1200 calories if a diet if you're eating like maybe a table a few tablespoons of food like some of my patients do that's not helping at all because your body is surviving it's in survival mode it doesn't care about fixing any other problem except being alive for the next day or for the next two days really so you are your body is not ready to you know set its root and say okay i'm going to be healthy i'm going to fix my inflammation or whatever it's going to be in a constant level of stress so you know not want to diet or crash diet any less than 1200 calories a day is not good for health um, obviously eating foods from all food groups and i'll get into each of uh, the most important ones now i'm guessing you have questions about supplements so when it comes to supplements it's a big huge business um, having supplements for hair and nails you know i've seen a lot of supplements that um, are marketed but to be honest uh, you don't necessarily need all those supplements uh, even just getting a healthy a good uh, type of multivitamin should be sufficient enough because a lot of the times the supplements that you get you know the ones that are b vitamins or the biotin or all these vitamins uh, that you get for hair and nail they are um, they have a lot of vitamin e and other um, vitamins and minerals that are that exceed the limit of how much your body needs so let's say in most cases vitamin e uh, can become very toxic um, if it's above a certain amount and usually if you're taking multivitamin and a hair and nail supplement you are getting um you're basically having vitamin e toxicity and it kind of reverse since the condition so a lot of these uh, nutrients uh, that are known to improve hair health they are naturally found in foods and you don't necessarily need it through supplements because usually when you get it to supplements if it's too much it backfires it always backfires because there is a lot of research looking at biotin looking at iron looking at um, uh, collagen all of these if you don't have deficiency for them in your blood then it's really not doing you any good to take these supplements. Um, actually, taking a lot more biotin, uh, if you don't have any deficiency, increases hair fall. It's the opposite. So really, I don't think you need a um, separate supplement for hair and nails as long as if you're eating fruits and vegetables, and uh, then you don't even need a multivitamin. But just getting a general multivitamin helps. Although there are some vitamins and supplements that you can, that will be good for you, stuff like vitamin D. Because, you know, we're living in Canada, um, we don't get enough sunlight and we don't get enough vitamin D through food. So, yes, getting a vitamin D supplement, if you are uh, low in vitamin D from your blood test, then yes, you need that. Also, omega-3s, if you're not eating enough fish, then omega-3 is a good supplement to have. Probiotics are important. Uh, there's more and more research coming on that so that's okay to have and if you're iron deficient then iron supplements are okay too but if you're not deficient in vitamin d or iron or biotin and zinc and all of that you don't need um, these supplements so i'm going to talk only about um, nutrients that are known to help hair hair health and i'll talk about uh, 11 foods that you have you can start incorporating today that will help boost your hair um, growth and um, prevent hair fall and the same vitamins that I'm talking about here are uh, go for skin as well so to improve the skin uh, these vitamins and nutrients are important 
So one of them is protein. So like I said, you know, when you are uh, crash dieting, you're usually losing good chunks of um, nutrients and protein is one of those things that you might be losing as well. Uh, sometimes when you go on a very low cal calorie diet or even low carb diet, uh, you lose muscle mass because your body has to supply energy from somewhere. So usually instead of taking it from fat, it'll take it from your muscles. So you have less protein to put it on your skin and your hair. So protein, um, the two important proteins for hair and skin are uh, keratin and collagen. Keratin is the protein in your hair and your nails and collagen is uh, for elasticity of your skin. So both of these proteins are important for health. Iron, a lot of people who are iron deficient do have hair fall, so that's important. Now remember I also talked about being having uh, health issues that's related to the gut where you're not absorbing these minerals and vitamins. So it's important that those things are resolved before you, or at least treated somehow, so that you can make sure your hair health is better once those things are taken care of. Vitamin D, and then we'll talk a little bit about zinc and biotin. These are very important for hair growth. Just, you don't need them through supplements. You can naturally, easily get them from food. And most people in this living in this day and age are not going to be deficient in biotin or zinc. Selenium is very important also. Uh, it's a mineral, but too much of it will also cause hair fall. So it's not good to have less, but it's not good to have more either. So it's very important. And the good thing with food is your food doesn't have too much of a supply of these nutrients. So it's never going, you're never going to be toxic with any of these vitamins uh, when you're getting it from food, but you will if you're getting it from supplements. Other stuff, omega-3 and antioxidant vitamins like vitamin C and E and then vitamin A. So 11 foods that you can start incorporating today for yourself, for your family to improve the growth of your hair and maintain it. So one of the best foods, I'll start from the most uh, regular things that you can do to the less regular things that you can do. Uh, so um, both most important is getting some nuts. Nuts are very rich in fiber, in protein, which is uh, the good type of protein. You know, there are animal proteins and then there are plant proteins. You need, kind, you need a mix of both. A lot of us only get mostly animal protein but they also are packed with unhealthy fats so it's good that you get a little bit of this from nuts uh, so too little fat and too little protein does lead to hair fall um, so getting a good supply of protein through healthier types like nuts so especially brazil nut i don't know if you've tried it uh, you do get it from costco so you can have it it is rich in selenium and it helps maintain thyroid issues. So if you do have thyroid issues, um, this is a good nut to incorporate into your diet. And like I said, thyroid also is linked to hair fall, low thyroid. So uh, getting a nut from uh, the Brazil nut family is a good idea if you would like that. Uh, also it contains vitamin E, B, uh, vitamins uh, like folate and then zinc and all of these which are supposed to help hair grow stronger and better so if you what i would say is daily on a daily basis take a handful of nuts either brazil nuts walnuts almonds or macadamia nuts these four are really good you can get other types if you want you can get mixed nuts um, but these would be a good uh, nuts to have you can do maybe one one type for a week and then another type for another week or something like that but about a handful every day of nuts Second thing, seeds. Uh, just like nuts, uh, seeds like sunflower seeds and stuff like that, they have lots of vitamin E and zinc and selenium. These again are known to promote growth of hair. An ounce, so that's a, close to about a tablespoonish of um, sunflower seeds gives you about 50% of your daily vitamin E needs. So you don't really need the supplement uh, when you can get it from a sunflower seed, you know. So also, it contains other B vitamins. You know, you look for B vitamins when you go uh, to supplements. You don't need that. You get it from your seeds. It's so tiny, but it's packed with all the stuff that you need. Um, 
Also, uh, flaxseed and chia seeds have omega-3 fats in them, which are known to fight inflammation and help in managing, uh, even balancing hormones and just fighting inflammation in general are uh, is good. So I would say daily, on a daily basis, try to incorporate about a tablespoonish of uh, sunflower seeds or flax seeds or hemp seeds or chia seeds. These are really good uh, types of seeds. You can also do um, the ones that are not mentioned here. Um, what's that called? Pumpkin seeds and other types that are fine as well. All of these seeds are packed with protein and healthy vitamins and minerals. Um, but don't go too overboard with it. One tablespoon is good enough. Um, same thing with uh, sesame seeds and all of that stuff. So there you go. So the next best food you can have for hair is uh, eggs. Eggs are excellent sources of protein. It's one of those unique foods and I'll talk about the second unique food um, in the next slides. Uh, but uh, it has vitamin D in the yolk. It has, it's a complete protein. So only milk and eggs are known as complete protein because they have all the amino acids that your body needs to build itself. Uh, so the more protein you have, the better development of your hair is. Um, obviously, depending on how you're eating and how less you're eating, if you're eating very less, all this protein is going to go somewhere else to build your muscles and do st other stuff that's important. But if you're eating a good supply, uh, you're getting all the calories and every other vitamins and stuff, then your body is going to take that protein and put it in your hair to improve growth and uh, shine of your hair. And eggs also have biotin, which is essential in the production of the hair protein, which is keratin. So without uh, biotin, your um, hair protein cannot be formed. So if you have less biotin from foods, uh, or if you're deficient, if you want to get checked, you can ask your doctor to get a blood test done to see if you have any uh, of these vitamin or mineral deficiencies. But if you don't, it's a good sign just getting naturally from foods is good. Vitamin, uh, vitamin, sorry. Eggs also have zinc, selenium, and all other nutrients. My uh, tip for you is choose omega-3 eggs the next time you get eggs. Uh, it's basically uh, the chickens are fed flax seeds. Flax seeds is packed with omega-3. Uh, these are healthy fats. So the the chicken that lays the that eats the flax seed will lay the egg and the egg will have extra omega-3 in it that's why um th they're called omega-3 eggs so it's a good idea to get an omega-3 egg because then you get the benefits of eggs and then you also get the benefits of the omega-3 so i've covered three this is the fourth one very important beans beans are um the cheapest medicine we have um, that we don't even realize it is a medicine because it is so good for health beans are they're like very they're dirt cheap that you always have them usually in your pantry but we don't really take good use of that medicine that's sitting in our cabinet beans are excellent plant-based proteins um, they are they have all the benefits they have the same amount of protein that you'll find in a meat portion but they have none of the fat, none of the cholesterol, none of the other problems that comes from uh, meat. And they are packed with fiber and they're packed with all this amazing stuff. So it's really, really a good habit to incorporate beans in your diet on a regular basis. Um, they are a great source of zinc. Zinc is very important for hair growth and for repairing the hair. So even if you have damaged hair or you have the follicles are smaller and there's infection or whatever this is good if you have zinc it helps re helps your hair recover or repair itself so that's important you can also get iron from beans iron uh, like i said a lot of people are deficient in iron which is why um, they lose hair so one other than meats the best uh, place to get iron is from beans but just remember that um Anytime iron is coming from a plant source, not an animal source, then you'll need to add some kind of vitamin C uh, to help absorb iron because the iron in meats get absorbed quickly in our body, but the iron in plants take 
need some extra effort. So making sure you add lemon or tomato to your chole, for example, um, or to your rajma is a good idea because that puts the vitamin C that helps with, to absorb the iron. Uh, so beans are examples of beans would be any kind of beans really rajma kidney beans like um, all kinds of legumes um, you can also do lentils lentils also kind of falls in this group uh, they have similar nutrients so maybe two i would say use three or more times a week if you can get beans somehow in your diet it's very good so whether it's through dal so i would say maybe do dal once and then do a little bit of chole or rajma um, some other time so just mix it up and just make sure you get a variety of different beans in your diet. Fifth uh, food that's super important for health is fish, uh, fatty fish. Um, they are excellent sources of omega-3. It's the best type which gets quickly absorbed. And omega-3 is known to fight infection and it's also linked to the growth of hair. So there's actually been studies uh, done where they've seen people who take omega-3 supplements and they have big uh, they have more they have less hair fall and they have growth of hair new hair so omega-3 is important so getting it through fish uh, is best rather than getting it from supplements uh, fish also has because fish has so many other things than just the supplement would the supplement would only have the omega-3 oils in it that's it but if you get the fish you'll get the protein you'll get the selenium uh, which you would probably go for look for in a supplement so it's better to do it through food naturally and you're also getting vitamin d so if you're regularly eating fish like on a regular basis once a week or twice a week you don't need any kind of supplements to be very honest uh, you're also getting b vitamins um, these are all known to promote stronger and better healthier looking hair so good examples of fish would be salmon, mackerel, or herring, even halibut is fine, or any kind of fish really. Even if you're getting fish from your home country, you know, the types of fish that you used to eat in Hong Kong, it's fine. But there's a lot of research on salmon and mackerels, uh, so that's why it's more recommended because they are known to have a good uh, supply of the vitamin D and the omega-3 and stuff. Like and then a side note on shrimp and oysters, maybe once a month, make a seafood day and have things like shrimps and prawns and oysters and clams because they are high in zinc which i told you that helps hair so um maybe once a month try to incorporate shrimp and oysters and stuff like that to your daily food sometimes i say when you go out go for seafood rather than going for you know your regular meats and stuff that way it's easier to make one day out of the week fish only one more bean uh, here is soybean. Soybean is actually being studied uh, for a um, nutrient in it called spermidine. Uh, it has been shown that it promotes growth of hair. So there was a study uh, looking at 100 people and they were given uh, spermidine supplements. Uh, and what they saw was that the hair stayed longer in the growth phase. So there was a longer time the hair was in the growth phase rather than the resting phase which means that there's more longer hair stronger hair and um, fuller head of hair um, and the follicles uh, the hair follicles were longer and stronger and the hair grew better so that's a good sign that soybean although this is fairly new a uh, study and fairly new research on this but it's a good sign that a soybean is good for health so there's no real recommendation of the doses and stuff but for me i would say just like you would add beans one a couple times a week uh include soybean uh in your diet now how to do that um i don't know if you've heard of edmame it's basically soybean so if you go shopping if you go from, to a superstore or even walmart you will find this in the freezer aisle um they're usually come shelled um, but you don't eat the shell, you just eat the deshelled ones. Uh, so basically, the way you do it, I think this one, the one from Walmart, usually what they do is uh, they have mini packs, uh, which you can just put in the microwave for a few minutes, like maybe three or four minutes, and they get steamed, and you just put a little bit of salt and black pepper, and you can just eat them as it is, and they're really good. And they're excellent for health because they have all the proteins and all of that fun stuff. Okay. 
getting to the more important other stuff is dark green vegetables dark green vegetables are packed with folate and iron and vitamin a vitamin c all the foods that i talked about so far none of them had vitamin c in them vitamin c is only and only found in fruits and vegetables if you're not eating fruits and vegetables um the amount that you should be eating there's probably very little or no vitamin c coming to your body except maybe the orange juice or something that you're eating or drinking um but even that is not um ideal so what i uh think is very important um is getting more of these vitamin c foods um they also uh dark green vegetables also have uh, vitamin a and vitamin a is uh basically helps the skin it's good for skin and it's good for hair the way it works is that it increases the uh, skin glands to produce sebum which is an oily substance which actually helps moisturize your skin and your scalp and that way it's keeping your skin healthy and free from infections and diseases and the and any dust and particles that clog up in your pores and your follicles so that's a good thing that's why you need a lot of that vitamin a which you get from naturally from um dark green vegetables so you also want they have iron but again like i said plant iron isn't easily absorbed so you want to make sure you add a little bit of lemon or orange or tomato when you're making uh some kind of uh sabzi so that uh, the iron in the sabzi gets absorbed into your blood uh good examples of dark green vegetables is spinach kale arugula broccoli cabbage brussels sprouts bok choy baby cabbage all of that sag all of these dark green vegetables okay. now berries also loaded with vitamins and antioxidants uh, berries are great antioxidants they fight infections they fight um problems such as insulin resistance and uh hormone imbalance so, so that those are really good um they also fight uh any kind of infection that's going to damage your hair and your hair follicles and then because berries are packed with vitamin c vitamin c helps make collagen you know sometimes you see supplements where there's collagen they promote collagen to apply to your i mean i'm not going to talk talk about topical stuff i'm just going to talk about internal stuff because that's what my my um expertise is but uh eating collagen will not really help improve collagen in your skin because in the at the end of the day collagen is a protein and if your body needs protein for something else it's not going to go and put that because collagen will become a protein so it's going to go and do other protein stuff it's not necessarily going to be converted back to collagen and back to your skin so eating collagen doesn't help so much but getting vitamin c will because vitamin c produces collagen so if you have enough vitamin c you'll make the collagen which helps the elasticity of your skin so your skin looks better and more moist and more elastic you have less wrinkles like less acne and all of that stuff uh protein uh this collagen helps strengthen hair also and it helps it pre- prevent it from breaking um as well so again vitamin c um from these berries will help absorb the iron from the other foods so maybe you know making once a week uh sorry actually you can do it more often you can do you know mix uh smoothie you know you can call it a skin or hair smoothie or something and add berries all kinds of strawberries blueberries blackberries red cranberries all of that you can add a few mixed uh kale you know dark green vegetables like kale and a little bit of nuts and seeds and that will be a perfect smoothie uh for your hair as well. In strawberry just maybe a cup of strawberry will have more than 140% more uh vitamin C that your body needs which is perfect because even if you get half a cup of uh strawberries you are getting all the vitamin C you need for the day. A uh, same thing with sweet peppers. This um are this is five times more it has five times more vitamin c than an orange so instead of an orange have a sweet pepper or bell pepper um they also have other stuff like antioxidants and vitamin a which i talked about that helps strengthen the hair 
produce collagen and fight diseases and fi fight the damages that's happening in your hair. There, it also shows that when there's too much stress, whether it's emotional or physical or there's inflammation, you have more growing grain of hair. Your hair is, gets grayer faster. So the antioxidants will also help with that. Um, vitamin A also will help speed the growth of your hair. So if you have hair isn't growing so fast and you know, getting a healthy supply of vitamin A through dark green vegetables and bell peppers is good to increase that. This is the second last one. Avocados are good. Uh, they're actually a great uh, sources of vitamin E, which is known to promote the growth of your hair. It's also an antioxidant, so it helps protect your skin and your scalp from damage um, and also helps recovery of the follicles. You know, when you are eating better and you're taking care of other stuff, and then you're also eating healthy, this will help recovery and recover uh, your hair follicles can recover faster when you're eating all these healthy foods. Um, and then it has a good source of omega-3, not as good as fish is, but it's still good enough. So making avocado a weekly thing in your life is not a bad thing. Last but not least, sweet potatoes. Anything, any vegetable that's kind of green, um, sorry, orange in color is really good for health. And it's actually encouraged to eat an orange vegetable um, or fruit every day actually um, and sweet potatoes aren't really potatoes they don't even come in the family of potatoes they're more related i think to ginger than it's related to potatoes so sweet potatoes are not potatoes they're just called potatoes but um, they are very good for health like they have uh, the beta carotene which which is the orange color and that gets converted to vitamin A, which is definitely known to improve hair health. So vitamin A that the sweet potato will produce will be will help speed the rate of hair growth and encourage thicker hair growth as well. You know how I said in female pattern hair loss, there's thinning of hair and the, the diameter of your hair is uh, smaller and smaller. So this can actually help reverse that. Um, when also other things are taken care of. I just want you to know food is good, but if there's an underlying cause which is not treated, you might not see all the benefits. So it's important to look at the underlying issues and try to resolve that while taking care, uh, taking healthy foods. Um, also, this prevents the follicles from regressing. You know how I said how the follicles will shrink. So they kind of help reverse that. So that's very important. So I would say like once a week or twice a week, uh, try to replace your rice and roti with a sweet potato. You know how um, most Caucasians eat potatoes of meat and vegetables? That's pretty good. You know, you can do that. You don't need to have rice uh, each time. time. But instead of potato, make it a sweet potato. And that would be better. Um, also, a side note, if you are generally just eating white rice and meats, meat ka salan, you know, say korma or something, or meat ki curry or chicken ki curry or something, if that's only food you're eating, let me just tell you, it has no vitamins, no protein, uh, well, it has protein. The things that it doesn't have would be vitamin C, there would be no vitamin A, there would be no um, selenium, and so what I'm trying to, uh, yeah, yeah, no vitamin A as well. So what I'm trying to get at is if you're just eating rice and meat, it's not enough. You need to get these other foods that I've talked about. So putting it all together, um, I made a list of daily and weekly things that you could do. On a daily basis, make sure you eat nuts, about a quarter cup or a handful of nuts and a tablespoon of seeds every day. Uh, get berries um, if you can, when you can. Try to get eat uh, strawberries or any kind of berries, maybe add them to your breakfast. Um, also, make sure uh, you cut bell peppers, you know, when you eat, when you cut cucumber and tomatoes for salad or for the side, make sure bell pepper is always there as well. Because cucumber really has very little benefit. If you're removing the peel, then you have no benefit from cucumber. So it's better you are actually cutting up maybe some bell peppers and to, with tomatoes and carrots, and that makes a perfect uh, salad on the side when you're eating a meal. 
uh, the carrot will give you that orange color and then you have the bell peppers and you can get bell peppers of all colors red green uh, red green yellow orange any types that you like um so yeah and then making sure you eat dark green vegetables as often as possible you can try doing that every day every all or every alternate day getting some kind of dark green uh, through either smoothies or um you know having spinach or some other stuff in your diet and making sure you eat beans and legumes and lentils and dogs on a daily basis if you can if not uh, if you can do them every day then what i would say like you know maybe monday if you if you're gonna eat leftovers monday and tuesday you could do dal tuesday sorry wednesday and thursday you could make a chickpea or soybean salad um and then on thursdays and fridays you can actually make rajma for breakfast or chole for breakfast or something like that so that, that sort of gets you into the legume uh, and getting all the beans and lentils last uh, thing weekly thing that you could do is getting a weekly supply of fish having eggs eating eggs once or twice a week is a good idea oh sorry three or four times a week you can do eggs um and then incorporating avocados sweet potatoes and seafoods once a month fish on a weekly basis but seafood like shrimps and oysters on a monthly basis all the stuff that i talked about here um i um i've designed a an online course which actually helps you put everything together and create your own meal plan for you, yourself and for your entire family um the cost of the course is 65 dollars but the thing is that it's a guided course. I teach you step by step how to make your own meal plans based on your weight and height. And I give you the amount of calories you'll need based on that. So you, I'll show you how to do the calculation. So even later on uh, stages of your life when you gain weight or lost weight, you can, you can kind of change that around and make your own meal plan. And then you can actually use this plan to make uh, plans for your husband or for your uh, ch children, you know, because it's catered. Uh, it's calc that you can do i basically show you how to do calculations and have many videos where i show you how to prepare uh foods you know what kind of combo of foods like you know just say you know how i told you the sweet potato that you can add with your um, meats and vegetables stuff like that so those sort of ideas are in there so if you like to get more help and resources that's there i'll put the link with the video if you want to check it out there are some free pre preview stuff in there as well if you want to just check them out but yeah so i wanted to conclude here i will take a few questions um i'm going to just scroll through here and see if there are any questions Sophia send me something does migraine cause hair loss um migraine it probably might cause hair loss because migraine might be one of the symptoms of another problem that's going on in your uh in your life so if you know the reason why the migraine is happening it's usually migraine itself is not an independent problem it's usually another a symptom of another problem so if you find out what that issue or root problem is yes then um, hair fall could also be a result of that and that can be treated once that the main reason is true okay yeah this question i wasn't able to understand why do the baby hair fizz I didn't get that. If you can clarify this question a little bit, that would be helpful. While the rest of the hair are fine, baby hair didn't happen when I was younger. So is it due to environment or due to lack of nutrients in the body? By fizz, if you mean um, they um, they are more static. You know, they have more static stuff. Then it's probably the way you're taking care of the hair. I think the type of brushes you're using or the type of hair products or hair styling products that you might be using for the baby, that could be an issue, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so next question. My teenage daughter, 16 years, has acute hair loss. Okay, did all her blood work all clear? Can she take biotin? If yes, how many micrograms? How can I improve her hair density? So if this is a 16 year old child, a girl, um, I would say you did her blood work, which is good. Still get her, get her hormones checked as well. 
because that might be the reason why she's having that. Or maybe she is, you know, when teenagers usually go through stress and it's probably also stressed. Um, if you see that her hair density is less than before, it might be the female pattern hair loss, which is a result of hormones. Um, but if you think it's just you're looking at a lot of hair fall all of a sudden, then that's probably from, um, from uh, you know, some kind of stress or some kind of thing that's happening in her life that she's not able to tackle so easily. So maybe, you know, speak with her, find out what's going on and, you know, look at that. Other question, does PCOS cause hair loss? Yes. Um, in most cases it does because it's a hormonal imbalance and usually PCOS is uh, defined by high testosterone levels or uh, higher insulin levels and yes that does um, cause hair fall and once that stuff is managed and while you're still eating healthy this could be taken care of. Both my teenage sons have dandruff and hair fall as well please advise. So dandruff would probably be because um, because the hair is not moist enough so I, a lot of people think that uh um hold on, it's the other way around. Well, well basically dandruff is usually a result of uh dry flakes on your skin so having a healthy diet which has lots of good vitamin a uh, especially from you know the sweet potatoes and the dark green vegetables that i talked about those would help improve uh, so basically orange and dark green vegetables are orange fruits and vegetables and dark green fruits and vegetables will have a lot of vitamin a which is good for that but also i know that um using uh, shampoo um i forgot the name for it um, i had it but basically the main ingredient in head and shoulders is uh, a good uh, shampoo to use for dandruff and therefore and it's probably also a result of a lot of um, dirt and dust. So maybe sh showering and shampooing a bit more often. If you don't do that that often, that might help. Because, you know, if he's a teenager, probably has a lot of uh, sweat and uh, th that sweat can get clogged in the pores. And that can cause lots of inflammation and dandruff. So that could be something that you could do. Making sure he washes his hair more often and stuff like that. Um, Farzana says that I suffer from arthritis plus diabetes plus hypertension. Can I eat eggs on a daily basis? My cardiologist put me on aspirin also as I can do exercise and can't go walking. Okay. Some things that I can tell you right off the bat is, um, so the first question, eggs, should, can you eat it on a daily basis? Generally for eggs, you need about two, um, so two eggs equals one uh, serving of an egg okay so usually we recommend no more than four servings now it's your way if you want to do one egg every day or if you want to do two eggs four times a week so maximum eight eggs a week is recommended overall if you already have um if you have diabetes and hypertension that's not a great if you have cholesterol i would maybe caution you but what you could do, you could do one whole egg and one egg white, and you can make that two, and you just have eight of that in a week, no more. That should be fine. Um, if you can't do exercise or go walking, uh, usually for arthritis, uh, we also suggest doing some uh, light, uh, some cardio, sorry, some uh, um, hydro exercise, so aqua, aqua fit sort of exercises so it's less strenuous to you but um it does exercise if, if not strenuous but even slight walking if you can manage that or do some kind of aqua fit type of walk that will help because the more you move the better it is uh, there's no replacement for that so um just trying to figure out what you can do to do a little bit more movement would be better if you have any other questions please let me know Okay, so we're done. I will hang up. Thank you so much for attending. Hopefully you found some benefit. Thank you. Have a great week and a great weekend and take care of yourselves. Bye.